I'd like to call to order the June 16, 2001 meeting of the Johns County Community College uh, Board of Trustees, and uh, we will begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Terry Schlick, can you give us the roll call and recognition of visitors, please? This evening's visitors include Richard Schroeder, Ann Arnott, and Kristen Babcock. Thank you. That brings us to the first of our two petitions and communications uh, section of tonight's agenda. The petition, petitions and communications section of the board agenda is a time for members of the community to provide comments to the board. Comments are limited to five minutes unless a significant number of people plan on speaking. In that instance, the chair may limit a person's comments to less than five minutes. Presenters may choose to speak at the first or second uh, petitions and communication sections, but not both. And prior to beginning the comments, we'll ask you to state your name, your address, city, and state. And do we have anyone that would like to address the board at this time? Okay, if uh, you could approach the, the uh, podium, please. And your, your name, address, city, and state, please. My name is John Winter. I live in Spring Hill, Kansas. I've been employed here at the college for a little over 22 years in the custodial department. And John, your address, please. 209 North Frank. Okay. Thank you. The first year that I um, was hired and worked here for the college, it was discussed about contract cleaning. And by the second year, I developed my thinking that if that was what was best for the community and for the college and for its patrons, I could easily be brought aboard on that. And um, I, I have had a commitment to the college that's neither uh, shallow nor short. Uh, when I uh, started working here, uh, my, my oldest son was nine. I've had four sons now that have uh, graduated from college, and I have three other, soon four family members that have attended college here. And I see my grandchildren on a trajectory attending college here. I, have a, I bring a commitment to the community and to the college and to the college's vision, its mission, and its values. I visit those often on the web page, and I like what I see. My loyalty to this college grew to another level when 10 years ago the administration and board insisted that all of its employees would be paid at the industry standard and norm for the field and position for which they were employed. Like many others that work here for the college, I've gone two years without an increase in my hourly wage, but I feel confident that I'm still paid at the industry norm. The year before, I had a nickel in uh, 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 elevation in my and my pay. Bids for outsourcing the housekeeping department have been received and the contract companies cannot reduce the cost of the consumable, consumables that the college re requires. That's toilet paper, that's going to be paper towels, can liners, chemicals. And we really hope that they, if they are awarded the bid, they will not reduce the services. The only way the contract companies can make a profit is to reduce wages and benefits. So I'm really perplexed. After making sure that we're paid equal to the industry norm, the college now entertains awarding a bid to a company that they know will have to pay us below the industry standard in order to be successful. And that appears so incongruent to the previous decisions and the values that we have published and owned. Um, such inconsistencies, I think, would damage this board's reputation and the college's reputation. Like most of you, I function daily in the social context of a family, and if at some point I decide that it's too expensive to live in the urban Kansas City area and I decide to hand in my resignation three weeks, and then I um, contact a real estate agent to sell my house, and the first that my wife and my children hear about it is when um, they place a sign in the yard and call to uh, be able to show the house. They're going to wonder, what's, what's up with Dad? And their confidence and their trust in me is going to start cascading. And as soon as they can, most of my kids are going to find a, a way to get off of the bus that I'm driving. Three months ago was the only communication we received concerning this process. We were assured that we all had a job till July, and that's now two weeks away. And the lack of being included in the communication process has taken a toll on our department. As would be anticipated, there's a precipitous decline in morale, in self-dignity, in trust and confidence toward the process that has left us 
not just us, but also our families, um, twisting on a spit. All of us, it doesn't matter what job we have, all of us, there is somebody out there that, is, that has the ability to convince the rest of us that he or she can do your job cheaper, more effectively, and more efficiently, and better than you can. They may not be able to do that, but they have the skill to convince the rest of us that they can. And over the years that I've been employed at the college, numerous educational institutions in the Kansas City area have been persuaded to use contract cleaning, only to discover to their dismay the mistake and how costly it was to their budgets and their people to try to reestablish the house the custodial house cleaning department. I'm asking the board to set in motion a process to do the investigation, the interviewing, to ascertain and understand why so many educational institutions, once they were enticed into contract cleaning, chose to return to in-house cleaning. I sure don't want, and I'm sure you all don't want us to be the next one on a growing list of educational facilities that had to learn by mistake and experience why contract cleaning did not fit their needs or their values. I've really appreciated uh, the boards that I have uh, been allowed to serve under. Uh, I pray that I would be one that would be diligent and faithful in the duties that uh, I perform here at the college, and I pray that for this board also, to be faithful and diligent in the duties that the electorate has given you. John, thank you. Hey again. I'm General Rowe. I uh, work at 433 North Center, Gardner, Kansas. Um, for months, I work custodial as well. For months, we've come to work doing our jobs with a huge ax over our heads. The lack of communication from administration has been extremely stressful and frustrating. Wondering each day, is this the last day they say? Is this the day they say, don't come back? We watch these companies come in and do their free trials and wonder if the budget was passed, why are they still doing this? As far as hiring on with a new company, I don't see how taking a 40%, almost 40% decrease in pay with no benefits, not just myself, but my partner who also works in this department, you are effectively taking away a whole income out of our home. We would have to move. Another stressful concern is the fact that these would technically be terminations. And the standing policy of this college is not to give any employee the, the notice ahead of time to bring him in on a Friday and to cut him there. I think we deserve a little bit better than that. I think we deserve some notice ahead of time so that we can make plans for our families, our kids. We have to make decisions. So I, I pray that at least we get some heads up and not just to come in on a Friday and be told don't come back Monday. Thank you. All right, do we have anyone else that would like to address the board at this time? Okay. My name is Andre Gilbo. It's 23500 West 73rd Street, Shawnee, Kansas. Um, a couple of days ago, I got an email from a, uh, an a, another employee here at the college asking, confirming whether I was going to be at the pin ceremony for my 15-year pin uh, coming up in August. And I had to reply to her that... Uh, I wasn't sure whether I would be on campus or not at that point. Uh, because we had been left primarily in the dark on, on what, what was going on with uh, the uh, contract situation here. Um, the, um, the lack of, of flow of information has been kind of kind of uh, disturbing to me and others in my department. And like John said, the morale has gone down significantly. Uh, you don't, we don't see the high fives. At, you know, after we've completed a shift, now the the you know hand slap and the hey, you, you know, everybody's doing a good job. Thing that we used to see it. What just six, eight months ago, um, and it's, it's, uh, it makes it harder, harder to do your job. Um, the other thing I would ask is, is a board is that um, the, at least in the media lately, now you may not think <clears throat> there have been any bad decisions made here in the last 
few years. But the college has been portrayed <clears throat> as making bad decisions. The administration has been made, portrayed as making some bad decisions in the last few years. Please hold them accountable to the decisions that they make, to the things that they bring to you to vote on as a board. Investigate, make sure that you're making a good decision. Because, and, and if, 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 uh, uh, if this is, this may be the way to go. It may be a, it may be a good thing for the college, uh, financially and what have you. I, I don't think it's a good way to go as far as the college family goes, but financially it may be a good way to go. But if it ends up being the wrong thing, hold your administrators accountable for their decisions, for the decisions that they have made, the things that they brought to you, the, the way that they have turned the college. The legal department, hold the legal department uh, accountable for, for the decisions that they, the, the recommendations that they've made. Uh, if, if, uh, you know, if, if we've got a, if we've got a, a legal department that apparently, it just seems like we're, we're going to court when we shouldn't, we're settling when we should, you know, we're settling things that we should go to court on and we're, we're going to court on things that we shouldn't even think about. Um, I'm getting off the subject there about the, the custodial department, but um, just basically uh, make sure this is the right decision before before you, you vote yes and just and just uh, do away with with uh, college employees as custodial uh, as co as uh, your custodial services. If you have a contract company coming here, whether we're rebadged or whether we're gone, uh, you're going to have uh, less, uh, less pride in, in what's going on here from a, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, you're, you're, gonna, you're, going to, you're gonna have less response, people are not gonna feel, feel like it's their area that they're cleaning. It's their, you know, it's their, uh, uh, it's their college. They're gonna, it's, it's gonna be, this is, a, this is a task to do, I gotta do it. I'm gonna get, do it just as fast as I can and as easy as I can and get out of here and get to the next one. Uh, you know, I take pride in, and responsibility for the area that I clean. Um, I, uh, you know, there have been mention of, of candy wrappers sitting on floor in corners or floors or under something for three months. Hopefully that's not happening in my area. I try not to, you know, I try to look under everything. Um, and I just, uh, I, I just think that if you, if you go with contract cleaning, you're, you're, uh, you're gonna get less of a, uh, a pride in, in ownership of the, the people doing the job. They're, they're just not gonna, they're just not gonna own their job. You know, it's, and if you are gonna rebadge, uh, if, if, if rebadging is a, an option in, in this contract, uh, if there's a mention of it, please make sure there's a clause that uh, allows us to get out and still get, still get out of the, the situation and, and, and uh, take on an unemployment option because I don't wanna be forced to work for somebody that I don't know uh, just because the wage and benefits are almost the same, you know, or market standard or what, you know, what, however we're gonna, they're gonna put it in the contract. Uh, and I hope I'm here to get that pin in August. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to address the board at this time? I, before I close the uh, communications petitions uh, section, I, I want to make uh, two comments. The, f the first is that that this part of the agenda is not intended to be a, uh, a debate section, uh, uh, but it's an, intended for the board to to hear the comments 
uh, from, from the audience, uh, so, so thank you for that. But having said that, I do want to make a comment uh, and, and just say that uh, the board will be uh, approaching uh, this particular topic with a great deal of uh, uh, deliberation and, and, and careful study, and we will be weighing uh, uh, very heavily both the human and financial costs of, uh, of this uh, bid uh, should it be a, uh, approved by the board. Uh, and uh, additionally, I will be asking for an update uh, when the management committee report uh, comes later in the uh, agenda, and I encourage you to, to stay for that. So uh, do I have any other board members that would like to make a comment at this time? All right, then I will close the uh, communications and petitions uh, section. We will have another one uh, later on in the, uh, the agenda. And we'll move to uh, awards and recognition. And uh, Dana, do you have anything uh, for me this evening? No, we have no. Okay. In that case, uh, uh, I am, am truly honored uh, to talk about uh, Lynn Mitchelson. Uh, for, for those of you that are available, there will be a reception uh, in Lynn's honor uh, tomorrow, Friday, at uh, uh, June 17th, 2011, from 5.30 to 7.30 in the Carlson uh, uh, lobby. And uh, before we, we go to the, uh, uh, the podium over there, uh, for those of you that may not know, uh, Lynn has served on the board of, of trustees for 15 years uh, and this is his his last meeting and he will be very much uh, missed uh, by uh, the board and me in particular uh, he's been a terrific friend and a, a terrific uh, mentor uh, for for new trustees coming on the board uh, for, for those of you that uh, might be interested in some of the highlights and, and some of the differences uh, that Lynn has made uh, while serving on this uh, uh, board of trustees uh, he was involved in hiring uh, two new presidents uh, for the college, uh, our, uh, our interim president uh, and also uh, our uh, permanent president, uh, Dr. Calloway. Uh, uh, and anybody just walking around the, the, the campus uh, is going to uh, not be able to notice the difference uh, that Lynn has made in this organization uh, with the construction of new buildings, particularly the Student Center, the Field House, the Police Academy, the Rainier Center, the Nerman Museum of Contemporary Art, additions to the uh, Hirsteiner Child Development Center, the parking uh, garage at uh, Galileo's Garden, in addition to the Science Building, a partnership with the Aletha uh, Medical Center that will lead to the opening of the Aletha Health Education Center uh, this fall, uh, participating in a successful fundraising uh, campaign to support the new Culinary Center, uh, which we'll be hearing an update on again later this evening. Uh, the creation of the Healthcare Simulation Center, creation of the Campus Police Center, and, and finally the uh, college's reputation for fiscal responsibility uh, as evidenced by its uh, AAA uh, bond rating uh, as, as well as, as innumerable um, contributions to uh, academic excellence at this. And John, I, I believe I was going to ask you to speak first, so I apologize for that, but I got carried away by the moment. You probably <laughs> took everything I was going to say away, but that's okay. No. Uh, my comments are, I've, I've, it's been a privilege to serve with Lynn Mitchelson for, now this is seven years for me, but I had the additional benefit of Lynn's mentorship because he hired me back in 1980 to work for him. So I know Lynn very well and I know his commitment and his ethics, uh, his attention to detail, as many of you know, the attention to detail and the ability to ask the very tough questions. and and to really come to a decision that to, to do the right thing. And, and that's what the qualities that Lynn brings and that's what I've had the privilege of being around for, for many, many years. And uh, his involvement with the college goes back more than 15 years. I know he was involved in the foundation, but I can tell you when I found my job in 1980, I went to the job center here at the college and found a posting from a new bank. Lynn wasn't familiar enough with the college at that point to put a posting for a part-time employee at the college. So he was very active in the college for many years and uh, we're gonna miss him, uh, miss him a lot and hopefully there are a few rounds of golf in there for <laughs> myself at least to play with Lynn. But uh, you uh, contributed immensely, uh, served on many, many, all probably all the committees, but he's very dedicated 
uh, developed a relationship around the state with other trustees and presidents of college and where before we might not have been as respected or we were certainly the envy of, of the state, Lynn reached out and uh, made some relationships there to make a very big difference in the KACCT organization and uh, your involvement on JCERT. But uh, Lynn is very dedicated and we're gonna miss him and I wish him well in his uh, golf retirement. He's actually not retired, but he's <laughs> still working, I guess. Right. Thank you. Uh, if I could ask uh, Lynn for you to join John and I at the podium. Okay. I don't think it's a new driver. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of the agenda where we get his badge and his Be <laughs> 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 sure to get the VIP parking pass first. Right, right. Lynn, we have uh, two items for you uh, a, uh, a plaque. The state's uh, sincere appreciation for contributions and service to the college and community as a member of our Board of Trustees, 1996 through 2011. So we'll give you that first. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a, uh, a card from, from the trustees that you can read at your, your leisure. Okay, thank you. And also a very exciting present here, uh, which we will let you open. Try not to destroy this wrapping paper. Right. <laughs> it's about the size of a basket. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? It's probably going to be a nice school. The conservative nature of the wrapping paper. You probably have a pocket knife in your pocket. Yeah, no, I don't. But maybe we have got one. Okay, and that is a piece by uh, uh, Mark Errol uh, from the Norman Museum store, which uh, Lynn had a, uh, a significant part in the creation of the, the Norman uh, Museum. And so, uh, Dr. Callaway, I don't know if there's any other background information you can provide on this piece? Well, one thing I would provide is that there's a top to it somewhere inside that box. I was so sure it was a basketball. I just <laughs> the, the basketball and golf gear will be tomorrow. Uh, but uh, um, the, uh, the young man who's uh, the artist who created that piece has uh, actually uh, been a student here at our college and moved on to KU. We know both of those institutions hold a warm place in your heart and is now very, very successful here in our community and also nationally. And, and Bruce Hartman wanted us to tell you that, uh, in fact, he's been so successful, Bruce owns two of his pots. So you're in good company, as you all know, Bruce has such a good eye for art. So um, we congratulate you on behalf of the college and the administration, faculty, staff, and, and thank you for your great work. As John mentioned, your integrity and all that you did to make us such a better place. So thank you. Thank you. And if we could uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I really enjoyed, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve this college. And as John said, I started back uh, in the early 80s when uh, we had a foundation of less than $200,000. We had Al Barton doing the job that Joe and Kate have done. And we had a, a volunteer, Marge Lichter, who was our chairman. And we were, got by on a little annual auction. And we went from there to raise over $20 million in the foundation. So, and I've been honored, to, I've had a passion for ever since I was introduced to the college by uh, Dr. Calloway, or excuse me, Dr. Carlson and uh, Dick Bond who invited me to come over here and our bank, as John said, was just down the street so it was a convenient uh, drive. And uh, there's something about what happens at Johnson County. It, uh, I think uh, Senator Moran and Dr. Calloway talked on the uh, 20th of May at our graduation ceremony about how this college transforms lives and if you're not careful Greg and others it will transform the lives of volunteers as well as those who are students here it really has been a wonderful experience and I don't intend to be a stranger I just won't be up here on the board of uh, trustees so thank you all so very much I've enjoyed working with everybody and uh, 
it's been a tr it's been a delight. I can't imagine uh, not coming here every month, but I'll figure out how to do that. <laughs> I have another passion now. I'm uh, working with a, a distressed bank in my hometown, of Baxter Springs, and it is a full-time commitment. Uh, being chairman and CEO of a bank that's under regulatory enforcement actions, as many are around the country, I think there are 880 some that are in this category out of about 7,000 banks. So. Uh, there's there's enough to keep me busy right there, and I'm so glad that we have tremendous leadership of this board. I can feel like uh, leaving this board of trustees, and we've had great trustees, inc including the founding trustees, who are a very impressive board with Will Billington and Jack Robinson and and uh, <laughs> Dr. Hugh Spear, who I got to replace. But I think right now, with the leadership of Dr. Calloway and this Board of Trustees and all the people in this room, this college has, has uh, the greatest opportunities it's ever had in the history of, uh, of its formation going back to the late 60s, early 70s. So my congratulations to this Board of Trustees and to Greg Musel, who will come into the spot that I've had, and I know it's going to do even uh, bigger and brighter things in the future. I look forward to to seeing it happen in this community. It's a great college. Thank you. We have a very long time. Once again, uh, if, if you can make the, uh, the reception uh, tomorrow from 5.30 to 7.30 in the lobby of the Carlson Center, I highly encourage you to, uh, to do so and express your appreciation to Lynn for his, uh, his very long uh, 15 years and more of, of service. So thank you again. All right, that moves us to our uh, college lobbyist report. And uh, Mr. Carter, is he with us today? Mr. Carter's not with us today. He's in Washington, D.C., representing us in couple of meetings there, but uh, um, we do have under tab one his, his report to the board, um, as he did report uh, in this uh, one-page document. The legislature did uh, gather for signee die on the 1st of June and uh, move forward um, into recess. The, uh, the items that uh, I think he discussed at the last meeting pretty much were the bulk of what's been going on, and, and we could answer any questions any of the board members may have, but... As you see, the report is very, very short this month. Okay. So we sent him off to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, seeing no questions or comments from the board, uh, we will move to uh, our uh, committee reports and recommendations. Uh, and uh, we'll begin very briefly with a uh, nominating uh, committee. And uh, without getting into... Uh, any details of, of uh, who will be nominated for, for what positions, those will come uh, at our uh, July meeting when we'll be voting on new officers and new committees and new liaisons uh, for the board for the, for the following year. And we will do, do that uh, after the, uh, the new board uh, has been and seated and uh, Lynn will be leaving us and uh, Greg Musil will, will be joining us. And so I do know that... Uh, the committee uh, that I've tasked with coming up with the uh, the nominations has been very busy with that, and I look forward to hearing their report uh, next month. And uh, with that, we will move to the uh, the management committee report and uh, trustee uh, Dr. Drummond. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a few opening comments about the find people who spoke before us tonight and then uh, defer some other comments to Dr. Calloway regarding timeline. But I, I would suggest to our folks that uh, this is very serious business for us and, and probably it's not been as quick as you perhaps would like to have it to be, but uh, we're being very, very careful. Uh, the trustees have not studied the information yet. We don't have the information yet because we have charged administration with uh, making sure they do all of their due diligence and do a very good job in evaluating uh, 
the process and, and the entities in the process and our services and all of those kinds of things. So we, uh, we're being very careful, very diligent, uh, making sure that whatever decision we make is, is in the best interest of the college, the best interest <coughs> of the employees of the college, and most of all, it fits our mission very, very tightly. So again, I, I want to express my personal appreciation for your energies and for your time and for your willingness to come before this board tonight and ex express your opinions and concerns. We, we really do appreciate that. With that being said, Dr. Calloway, if you could make a few brief comments about the timeline mm -hmm. that's unfolding, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Drummond. Uh, for all the board members and the members of the community, the uh, college is right about on, on track from a timing perspective of where we expected we would be as of uh, this point in the process. We did um, have bid opening and uh, then five groups were invited in to do presentations to um, a committee of uh, broad-based committee uh, of individuals who who are uh, who have now had those presentations in fact those presentations I believe were last week um, our uh, our representatives from cabinet who were in attendance at those meetings um, were gone at the earlier part of this week in fact dr. Grove is back as of today dr. Corb is still gone through the rest of this week and so on Monday at uh, cabinet then we'll have a presentation from them and it'll be really the first time that the uh, leadership team sees and hears what the, you know, what the what the bids look like, what the process looks like, and where we happen to be standing at the time. And uh, then it would be our intention to, um, as I've uh, communicated to a couple of you today, um, bring forward a um, basically a presentation to each of the board committees because each committee will have some interest from your own per particular perspective, be it HR management, learning quality. Um, We'll be doing a presentation to each of those committees so you can ask questions about the overarching process, but also how, they, how those issues specifically um, affect the issues that affect your committee. And then plan to do a full um, presentation, public presentation, although our, our committee meetings, as you all know, are also open, but a full public presentation then at the next board meeting and then start to take under uh, consideration what some of our options might be and what timing might be. So at this stage, um, I think the message is pretty um, similar to what we heard earlier, which is we haven't really gathered, we've gathered a lot of information, but we haven't had the chance to really look at it or share it not only with the administration, but also with this board and, and uh, the college community. And at such time as um, we see that probably the first part of next week, then we'll be in a better position to start to distribute information. But at this stage, we don't have anything that we really can distribute to you. And those who were able to participate in the presentation uh, have been um, gone. So they'll be back on Monday. We'll have that full presentation and start to begin to brief the board committees and, and community as a whole. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Cook. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I could, if I could just make a comment. Um, I appreciate all of that. I, I think what I heard tonight and what I've heard on the telephone is, is a common denominator of not knowing what the process is. Um, and uh, we, we have, what, about 100 people, I think, in that department. And I'm not suggesting, Dr. Calloway, that you need to have that direct communication. But it seems to me like some of this angst could be avoided with two-way communication within the department. And I know there's nothing to say about where we are with the process of making a decision. But it seems like there's more anxiety about not knowing what the future will be uh, even even in uh, the process itself. So I, I would just encourage that that communication takes place within the department uh, so that, that these people uh, can have some questions answered that are able to be answered. And, and the decision of whether we do or not go to privatization is we're not there. But it seems like there's some really anxiety about what that, what that potential could be. I, I would. I, I don't disagree with you at all. In fact, uh, um, you know, we'll we'll make sure that some of that communication does happen. I would just say though that um, as we started to investigate this process, I held a town hall meeting with all of the members of the housekeeping crew who would, who were interested in joining us. I think we probably had 90 out of the 100 individuals there that evening. Our time frame is exactly where we said that evening we would be, which is we would be not really have much information to share until we start to get get the information from and feedback so um, our, our time frame isn't any different than we shared with them um, back um, when we first started the process and the conversation we said probably the earliest our a decision would be made in July or August with no change in anyone's status um, 
in the September to maybe even October time frame. That's probably exactly where we are. But we don't even know what we could share with them other than, you know, timing. Um, you know, we're very open to whatever the conversation might be. And as I shared with you on the phone, certainly we'll make sure that we have some additional communication sometime next week as soon as we see where we are Monday so we can share information. But our time frame hasn't changed from what we shared in the very earliest parts of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm not sure that the stress level will go down until the decision is made because right. the uncertainty is the problem. And so I think I'd encourage you to bring it forward sooner than later and let's get the decision made because uh, they won't sleep at night until that's done. So I'm we, we, do, we do have some timing requirements statutorily related to bid processes and all of that, but we can certainly fast track it from here on out. Yeah. And if that's the board's desire, we certainly can do that. And I'm fine. I mean, we're fine either way. Um, we'll 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 speed it up. And I and I think there is some you know good rationale, Trustee Stewart, for that kind of a process because you know we you know we're going to be reasonable about this too. We don't know where the decision is going to go. We really don't. If we did, you know, we could we could do that. But um, we we will uh, we will fast track it now as best we can. I want to ensure that that fast track process doesn't uh, short circuit any of the uh, deliberateness and, and carefulness uh, of the process. Uh, Trustee Rail. Yeah, I just wanted to comment briefly. I, I think that um, the transparency and openness of the administration has created a little bit of this angst because rather than wait until the 11th hour to reveal that this was being done, you know, we've been very open and the administration's been very open from the beginning. and. You know, that does create a certain amount of angst, and unfortunately, we all have to work through that process. But I also wanted to mention one of the things that I've heard from Mr. Winter and, and the other folks that I've talked to about this issue is kind of this repeated uh, claim that other public entities have made the move from um, internal custodial services to outsourcing those services and then for whatever reason have reversed course and gone back to the way it was being done before. And I would be curious when... Um, the issues come before the various committees uh, to find out if there's if there's a basis for that if in fact that has happened and if it has kind of anecdotally uh, what the reason was for those those entities that made that decision to um, to handle things the way they did because certainly uh, if there's some validity to uh, the premise that we don't want to make the same mistake that other folks have made um, Clearly, learning from others' mistakes has its benefits. So I would just be interested in hearing when we get to that phase, um, if, we, if we can discover that, um, kind of what, what has transpired with other, other areas, entities in the area. So I, I want to make sure that we give full voice to this, this issue uh, at this time for what we knew. Do we have any other uh, trustees that would like to comment at this time? All right. Trustee Drummond, please continue then with your okay, report. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And I would just add comments to what you said, Mr. Chair, regarding the deliberateness of the process. We want to make it as quick as we can, but we want to make sure every leave is turned over and we examine all the processes and, and options. And as Trustee Rail said, to make sure that we've done our homework so that we don't come back two years from now and decide to turn things around if, if in fact, any of that happens. Uh, moving forward with the management report, the committee report, you'll find behind tab three, uh, on pages three through 28, our committee, we met on the 14th, and you'll find uh, our recommendations on pages seven through 22 on the board packet. Uh, we'll make 12 recommendations to the trustees tonight. Collectively, these recommendations add up to about $1.1 million. So I will go through each one of these individually, as laborious as that is. We're talking about quite a bit of money, so I think that's appropriate. Beginning with the first recommendation, uh, we're talking about the retention of the bond council. These, this is one of the recommendations that doesn't cost us any money unless we act on it. Uh, and essentially what we're recommending is that we continue with the same uh, bond council that we've had in the past, Gilmore and Bell. They've uh, served us very well at the college. They will serve as our council. We will only engage them when, in fact, we have work for them to do. Uh, they're not on retainer. Uh, we will use them. They will charge fees only when we're in the process of uh, doing some bond work and give us advice on closing and help us with the closing process. With that being said, it's the recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the retention of Gilmore and Bell as bond counsel for the fiscal year 2012. And I would so make that a motion. Second. 
All right, we have both a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, on the fee <coughs> basis, uh, I, I recall those are set uh, by the language of each individual bond transaction, and they're kind of fixed uh, re uh, as it relates to that bond. Is that not correct? I, I believe okay. so. Yes. Thank you. Well, we, we get an opportunity to negotiate, so yeah, we, we don't have to accept what the first proposal. Yeah. All right, seeing no other discussion, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The second recommendation pertains to the retention of our financial advisor. That's on page 8. Uh, we desire to reappoint uh, Piper Jaffrey as our financial advisor of the college. They've served in this capacity very well for the past several years. They help us with a lot of different issues in the financing part, our revenue sources, cash flows, amortization schedules and other advice that we can get from them. Fees for serving as a financial advisor are only payable at the time of closing. It is a recommendation of the management committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the retention of Piper Jaffrey for, as financial advisor for fiscal year 2012. And I would so move that, Mr. Chair. Second. All right, we have both a motion and a uh, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Third recommendation is retention of our college lobbyist. That's on page 9. Uh, we had an evaluation done on our college lobbyist, and you received an executive summary of that somewhere in your packet uh, probably tonight. Uh, we had good discussion about his services. We are very satisfied with what he's done with us, particularly at the federal level the past several years. Uh, the total compensation expenses are the very same as they were last year. It is a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees approve the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the retention of the Carter Group Incorporated as the College Lobbyist for fiscal year 2011 and 12 for a total of $71,645 plus expenses in an amount not to exceed $8,600. And I would so move that, Mr. Chair. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Trustee Sharp. I have, I have a quick question, Mr. Chairman. I had a constituent <laughs> call and asked me what the um, renewal uh, on, on this contract was, and, and actually some of the other contracts as well, in terms of when do we go out for RFP? Do we have a regular schedule of going out for RFP on this? We, um, if, if I might, Mr. Chairman, to yes. Trustee Sharp's question, um, we do have, um, we did go out for RFP, and as a result, um, since, I went, since my, my tenure began here, and, um, and, and a lot of that had to do with a pretty unhappy um, situation we had with our previous lobbyists, quite frankly. Um, we did go out for RFP. We're, we're not required to do that uh, because it's one of the services that, um, that can just be contracted for, but we did go out for RFP. Uh, we probably would look at doing an RFP next year. Uh, because this would have now given us, I believe, our third year of service. This is the fourth. Fourth year of service with okay. Mr. Carter. Okay. And just to take a look at all the, at, you know, the kind of work he's done. But, but what we, one of the things we've done is to start an evaluation process for, um, for this kind of a service. And, uh, in fact, we do the same with legal counsel. Uh, but we, do, we did do a written our, um, evaluation this time. We've been very pleased with his work, and so we've decided to move over for one more year. But I do think it's time for us to, you know, after four years, probably do another RFP. When we did do the RFP last time, um, his services actually were um, not only the best bid, but the lowest bid, and um, significantly less than what we were paying in the past. Um, and I think his service has been just exemplary. But we do have a process for that. We're not required to, but, but it would be our intention to do that. Okay. Thank you. I agree. I think he's, he's done an excellent job. And um, I just think for transparency and accountability's sake, it's good for us to go out for RFP for these these types of, of contracts. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tr Trustee Mitchelson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could speak to that just a moment. In the 15 years that I've been on the board, we've had three different lobbyists, and each time we've made a change, we've improved our situation dramatically. And I, frankly, am very, very impressed with what Dick Carter's done for us, not only in Washington and Topeka, but just in general, his knowledge of, uh, of uh, all the individuals who represent this college and uh, how he can influence uh, to the best uh, monies that flow to this college. He's really done a superb job and he's easy to work with. I think we've made an improvement every time we've changed and I don't know that we're going to find anybody any better than what we've got now. But it's always good to look yeah, and it's always sure. good to do the due diligence and I think that that would be appropriate next year. Um, and 
you know, just having having that evaluation process and really being able to see what are the strengths and and the opportunities to get better, I think, um, truly help us. See no other discussion. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving to the fourth recommendation on pavement and concrete restoration. You find that on page 10 of your packet. Uh, we have a very beautiful campus, but it's not beautiful just because it's beautiful. It's because we make it beautiful. And this is one of those things that we have to continue to do to uh, uh, deal with deferred uh, maintenance and, and make our campus beautiful. So this is a pavement and concrete uh, work that we need across the several places on campus. It's a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve a bid of $353,777.38 from McConnell and Associates Incorporated, plus an additional $25,000 to allow for contingency for unforeseen cost for total expenditure not to exceed $378,777.38 for pavement and concrete restoration. And I so move that. Second. All right, we have both a motion and a second, and I do have one uh, very brief question. Sure. Uh, the uh, text here indicates that the uh, that there are 32 zones across the campus. Is that meant to imply that there are are more than 32 zones, uh, and that this vendor is only going to do those 32, or that the entire campus is broken up into 32 zones? I think we should call Rex up, and <laughs> he can address the 32 zones. Yeah. Well, we divided this uh, project into 32 zones, and the main reason we did that was for to make sure that we had a budget to cover uh, the areas that we identified. So if the bid came in too high and exceeded our budget, then we would only do X amount of zones, and we'd prioritize those zones, and they're prioritized by concrete uh, repairs and asphalt, so various locations on the campus. All right, but the entire campus is, is covered by these 32 zones? Yeah, okay. All right. All right, that answers my question. Thank you. Trustee Cook. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, we're having a number of bids that have contingencies applied to them. And I, I think I have a two-part question. Sometimes those contingencies are 10%, sometimes they're less, sometimes they're more. Um, and, and usually my understanding of a contingency is it's there because we're not sure what we might find behind that wall or under the soil if we do a project. Uh, first part, how was the contingency amount determined? And then um, I'm more interested in what the internal controls are for approving contingency payments to the contractor. Rex? Uh, as you suggested, you know, for, un for unforeseen uh, problems that we see, in this case it would be below grade. Uh, the contractor does not see this contingency. It's not part of their contract so they don't see it's controlled by me and uh, so they don't see it and it's twenty five thousand dollars for this particular project was based on budget we didn't have enough budget to buy ten percent so I had twenty five thousand identified because that's the amount of budget I could uh, address for this particular project and as I understand Rex if I could interject here trustee cook you're very tight on administering these additional funds. They have to have a very good reason right. approved by you in order to tap into the contingency. Is that, do I understand right. that correctly? Well, would you, uh, would it be fair to say that a, a industry standard practice would be a 10% contingency? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that because I, I think the perception could be the more we have contingencies on bids, um, the, the more there's the potential for the contractor, and another contractor may have been a very base bid and didn't anticipate the contingency. So I'm, I'm pleased to hear that we're very sensitive to internal control of payable out of the contingency accounts, and it's just not a, a free pot of money that a contractor may have access to. Yeah, I think the control is important because you said they don't see it, but if they would happen to read our minutes, they would see it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Chances of that are probably slim. That they, but well, no. I still have to prove it. Right. I know. Right. So the, other, the other question is, we we only had one bid. Yeah, that was uh, what's up with that? Is well, nobody else wanted to do the work? This is a time of year where there's a lot of school work going on, so uh, there's a lot of work, and and so 
that part of it. Uh, the other part of it, you know, due to the economy in the recent years, I think a lot of these companies have downsized. So they're not able to bid on as many projects as they have in the past. Uh, and, you know, for an asphalt repair project, this is pretty small. You know, I, I called Mac and Annie and talked to them. He said, it's just a small project. And for me, it's too small to bid on. So when you came up with the estimate, it was a, some sort of book you go out of that this is what this ought to cost based upon this many square feet of? Yeah, and we have a, a consultant that helped us develop this project, the specification okay. for this project, uh, based on their experience. Okay. Well, maybe that's a good sign for the economy if they're, if they're either right. uh, well, uh, too much work to bid on or? Also, last year we only had one bid for this same type of project. I know we've had several lately that's just been one bid, the library, I think, or, or something else. Okay. Yeah, I think Rex makes a good point from contractors I've talked to. They've so reduced their workforce that there's only so many jobs they can do. And, and so they're sensitive on bidding on the jobs they think they can make the most profit on. And so you do, you're not, we're not seeing as many bids overall as we did just last year. Right. I, I think the workforce part and the reduction of of employees and their companies affected this. All right. Any other discussion? In that case, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to recommendation five, concrete pavers repairs. That's on page 12 and 13th of your booklet. Uh, again, more repairs uh, because of the environment we live in. There's just a lot of issues that occur in our concrete area, et cetera, pavers in particular. The recommendation of the management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve a low bid of $170,000 from N.W. Rogers Construction Incorporated with an additional $17,000 to allow for contingencies for unforeseen costs for total expenditure not to exceed $187,000 for concrete paper repairs, and I would so move that. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item six is uh, masonry repairs. On page 14, this project in 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 includes a repairs of flashing and mason masonry in the ITC building and the WLB building uh, in different parts of that building. So it's a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the low bid of $181,000 from MTS Contracting Incorporated plus an additional $15,100 to allow for the contingencies for unforeseen costs for a total expenditure not to exceed $196,100 for ITC and WLB masonry repairs. And I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. The seventh recommendation is Cisco maintenance, uh, page 15 of your packet. Uh, this is for basic maintenance uh, for switches, hubs, chassis that are located across campus. The recommendation of the management committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the low bid of $153,457.55 from Datalink Corporation for the annual contract for the Cisco maintenance. And I would so move. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, recommendation eight is a disk to disk backup solution, page 16. This is a uh, purchase will allow replicated backup of data from two data centers and reduce the disk capacity by using deduplication. Now, if you understand that, you're a lot smarter than me, but it sounds like a good thing to me. It is a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the proposal from Datalink Corporation in the amount of $76,830 for the purchase of disk-to-disk -disk backup solution, and I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right, we have both motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Next recommendation is for upgrades and reconfiguration uh, to our platform. It's a recommendation of the Management Committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the College Administration to approve the proposal for ITS Partners LLC 
for SNAC uh, consulting services in the amount not to exceed $65,000, and I would so move that. Second. Right, any discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, we've been consistent in listing the uh, people who provided bids, or even if they did not bid, and I'm curious why we didn't list the uh, responses of the five people that bid this project. Mitch? Right, but we don't list what they bid. The pricing, you mean? Right. The, the reason we haven't on this is it was an RFP, so there was various criteria in addition to pricing that went in, that factored into the decision. Um, I can tell you that that um, the recommendation is to go with the lowest bidder on it, but it's not truly an apples to apples comparison to list of pricing. Mm -hmm. I just would encourage us when we can to list the pricing. It's helpful for me at least to see what the difference is. I, and I realize there are several other criteria uh, that could be uh, included in an RFP. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chair, uh, recommendation 10, it's renewal of annual contract for travel services, as you might recall from last year. Uh, this we set aside $120,000, but that will be used on an incremental basis, and it may not exceed that. And this past year, it fell short. It looks like it will fall short of that. So this is for travel service. It is the recommendation of the management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation, of the college administration to approve the renewal of annual contract for travel services from Egenta, an Expedia company, incorporated company to include transaction fees plus the cost of airfare, rental cars, lodging at an annual expenditure anticipated not to exceed $120,000. And I just might add, we talked about internal controls uh, on this particular contract, and we seem to have very good internal controls at the college so that people who want to travel have to have a lot of authorization before they can do that. With that being said, I would move this recommendation. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. The 11th recommendation, medical models for Olathe Health e Education Center. Uh, so it's part of the budget uh, to build up the educational center in Olathe. It's a recommendation of the management committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the lowest acceptable bids of $106.21 from Carol Carolina Biological Supply Company, $3,239.05 from Sergeant Welch uh, VWR, and $62,541.73 from Wards of National Science for a total <coughs> expenditure of $65,886.99 for the purchase of medical models for the Latha Health Education Center. And I would so move that. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. I want to compliment the detail. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you. All right. I see no other discussion. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this is a recommendation you've all been looking for. It's an annual contract for Apple Trainer. Uh, it's a recommendation of the management committee that the Board of Trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the establishment of annual contracts for uh, certified Apple trainers with Ben Balser and Lipper Media LLC and an annual expenditure anticipated not to exceed $104,850. And I would so move. Second. All right, any discussion? Mr. Chair, I really hate yes. to be uh, a pest tonight. Uh, but just a question. Uh, we have a very talented faculty. Is it not possible for any of our faculty to be faculty to be Apple certified, or is this such a training that, um, and it's a full-time task to perform these? Well, I guess my question is, why are we contracting this out and not having a faculty member do this? Much of the, much of the training that would come through this kind of a contract um, is actually contract training that we would do for external entities through our continuing education program. Um, so we might have someone who would come in and do a training all day for five days. And because of the nature of how that works, then it okay. isn't always consistent with our faculty's, um, you know, schedules and capability because they're teaching, you know, okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday from X time to Y time. And so 
um, there are challenges that what this does is provide us with with that with the flexibility and also the talent to do more of that kind of contract training we do have f uh, faculty who do teach in our continuing education area schedules allow and timing allows and, and how it works out financially so what this does is give us uh, the capacity to do some of that training in a more customized environment for those entities that need it and this would also be a contract that is a not to exceed based on the use of the right. individuals who are listed there. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just had a quick question about the number of, of firms that are responding um, to a couple of these um, tech, you know, you know, data, data backup, um, all, a, a couple of the, t the tech bids. I'm wondering if the local newspaper um, isn't going to get us the most. I mean, there are hundreds of people in Kansas City who could, who would fit this bill and would be um, a very affordable bid, but they're not going to be looking in the newspaper for. A, I'm, just, I'm wondering if there are other ways that we can advertise, especially tech opportunities, to a more tech-friendly um, audience that's, that's traditionally not going to read the newspaper. Maybe that's a question for for Rich. Mitch or for. Uh, yes, we try to post these um, bids on our web page, the county procurement web page also. Um, some of them are limited because there's only certain resellers within geographical areas that can sell the products that we're buying. And that's happened, I think, in one or two of these in the past tonight. Um, but we try to, we try to advertise these <coughs> people like we mentioned. We maintain a bid list of vendors who contact us put them on our web page whenever we can. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try different ways to make it known in other different That would be something that, um, you know, even the, the community college, uh, whoever, whomever handles their Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts could tweet out, hey, did you see this job um, opportunity, this bid opportunity for an Apple expert to come in and train on our website? Um, you know, because a lot of people aren't going to go specifically, if they're not looking specifically at a job at Johnson County Community College, they're not going to go specifically to our website to look for it. So um, that would be a good opportunity to use social media to get more, more bids, lower bids. Um, just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Uh, and before we uh, vote on it, just one other comment. Uh, I would encourage uh, all the other trustees uh, to uh, jump in with their, their seconds. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure John needs to second every single one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but so feel free to, to, to jump As in. As a there. management committee member, that probably makes sense to second yeah. it. Okay, very good then. You know, and it, it does mean something to me that the two committee members that were listening to all of these proposals are both in favor of doing it, and that, that's kind of mm -hmm. good reason for that. Okay. And just to clarify, I actually missed that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> John, I think you should have stopped while you were ahead. <laughs> I didn't want Lynn to think. But he reads his patch. All right. Uh, with that, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the bids for the night, but I just might draw your attention to, on pages 23-24. You'll see the Capital Acquisitions and Improvements Status Report. Uh, all projects uh, appear to be on time and schedule and budget, uh, so we're in pretty good shape there. We review that uh, very comprehensively every month. In addition, on page 25-26, you'll see your IT infrastructure plan. Again, we spend considerable time going over that. Uh, Denise uh, Moore does an excellent job in, in keeping us up to date and maneuvering all these things. It's a, it's, a, it's a significant job, and it takes a lot of expertise and a lot of energy, and her and her staff do a wonderful job keeping everything running as we expect it to be. So I want to point out that all of that out to you. With that being said, uh, that concludes our report for the evening. Unless there's Hi. questions. Thank you. All right, learning quality, uh, Trustee Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Learning Quality Committee met uh, on Monday uh, the 6th at 8 a.m. and uh, had a good conversation about student engagement uh, measures. There are two surveys for which um, the, the community college participates, one with um, overall current students and another with, with incoming freshman students um, to sort of measure and benchmark against our uh, 
community college colleagues across the country uh, how engaged students are. And it's anything from asking a question in class to communicating with a professor via email or visiting a class website, um, attending a, a campus event, joining a club, etc. cetera. And um, I don't know if we've posted those have we posted those flyers on the website? Does anybody know? The, our our um, handouts? No. Okay. The information is posted on the IR website, our uh, portal for the website. Okay, so is it publicly accessible though to this? Um, I don't know. Okay. It's just interesting, mm -hmm. um, interesting data to see uh, where, where we measure. Um, it was, a, it was a very good conversation. I, I don't know, um, it seems like the, the survey costs a lot for us to do and maybe we're looking at doing some, something internally which may be a cost saver and we may be able to get some of the same um, data from it. That's an ongoing conversation. And we also had a conversation about um, a civility statement which you'll find a lot of public organizations going to, um, one wouldn't think that you would have to state that we should all be civil to each other. But um, as we all know, in this heightened um, time of public involvement, everyone isn't always um, civil, for, the, for lack of a better, for another word. Um, and I don't know if this, this civility statement is in the board packet. I would encourage all of you to, to take a look at it. It's very, very basic, but just the fact that um, we're, we're planning well, once, once it kind of moves through the, all of the processes to post it in some very obvious places so that everyone uh, knows what it means to, um, to work here, to go to school here, to be on our campus, what the expectations are in terms of, of your behavior toward others. May I say something on that? I, Please. I, I'm very impressed with what the administration has come up with here in terms of a positive statement about what expectations are about behavior on the campus. The other way to go about it is to set up rules and say thou shalt not do this and thou shalt not do that. And I think all of us have seen in the private sector and in the public sector when values are posted and they're prominently posted and they show up in a number of places, I think it affects behavior. You begin to kind of say, oh, this is the way things are done at this business enterprise or, or this company or this uh, organization. I, I think this is a wonderful idea, and those areas, like the parking lot where confrontations could occur, be nice to look up when you're about to say something to the guy that just cuts you off. <laughs> oh, there's a sign that says, I will be civil, Still and I'll take responsibility. Place. And I really think it does affect behavior. So well done, whoever's come up with this idea. As valuable as parking is here, we probably should post it at the entrance to every <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> uh, we also discussed, um, a, a really exciting opportunity that we've been presented with to host the League for Innovation board meeting here next October, um, which is a, a lot of lead time, but this is a huge deal um, to be able to host this event, to host uh, representatives from, from our partner League of Innovation schools here on campus. It is October 2nd, um, the best day of the year, in case you're wondering. Um, through October 5th <laughs> uh, of next year, and it, like I said, it will be here Oh, I'm sorry, not on campus. It's going to be downtown. I forgot about that. No, no, no. Yeah, it's going to be on campus here. Okay. So, yeah, you're referring to the... Um, the next convention. event. Okay, the convention is here in town. Correct. Partnering with MCC. Correct. Okay, and that's... They're all within a month or two of each other. They're in the same month. In the same month. Okay. Sorry. I remember they were a couple of... They were close, to, close together in terms of schedule. It'll be a very, very busy week, and I'm glad I'm not an event planner on campus. Uh, the last thing that we discussed was additions to curriculum and changes to curriculum. There were three uh, very interesting um, small business courses or, or certificates added to the to the uh, <clears throat> the, the <clears throat> curriculum this this past meeting: um, direct sales, family business, and franchising. Um, Twelve and thirteen credits um, each, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, just en enabling some of those um, specific programs, um, you know, how to run a family business, the accounting behind it, all of that sort of thing. Um, also, the franchising, how do you run a franchise, work with corporate, et cetera. It was interesting. Um, certificates for those programs. So 
Uh, we have not set a next meeting. I will assume it will be uh, not the 4th, not July 4th, but the Correct. week after. Um, is anybody, I would be happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Trustee Sharp. All right, Human Resources, uh, Trustee Dr. Cook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, by the way, Dr. Grove, if uh, you're in need of rooms for those meetings, uh, hotel rooms, <laughs> I, I know where you can get some. Uh, our committee met on June 7th and uh, discussed uh, three things. One was the non-discrimination statement. You'll recall that uh, is really focusing around the, um, um, the discussion of gender identity and gender expression. Uh, we have discussed that. Uh, we, we feel we need one more meeting to, uh, to discuss that before we bring it to the full board. And we'll be doing so at our July uh, executive or our human resources meeting, which is actually going to be June 28th. And uh, we expect then to have a, a statement for you to consider at our July board meeting. Um, we talked about the compensation study, and as you know, we've completed the, uh, the three phases of the Hay uh, adjustment. Uh, based on that salary study. Uh, the discussion really focused on do we leave it now or, and walk away or do we continue to try and maintain what we have and our discussion focused on that we, th we think we need to have some kind of maintenance going on forward. Uh, Dr. Korb will be um, uh, reviewing sources for an RFP. Uh, Hay may be the study. There may be other options that we might utilize. She's pursuing options with ACCT. Uh, to, to make sure that we maintain what we have and we'll, uh, we're considering doing the faculty as the first group of that three-year, uh, one-third segment each, each year over a three-year period. Uh, we also then talked about criminal background check policy and procedure. Uh, we're discussing uh, what detail we want there. Again, we'll discuss that in more detail in June and hopefully have something for you in July. We did move into uh, uh, executive session and I would defer uh, any other comments to Trustee Rail and Dr. Calloway. Uh, thank you, Trustee Cook. I, I think you covered it well. I did want to mention um, just very briefly that the, uh, in, in the event that anyone is wondering about the time lag on the non-discrimination statement, um, it's really been an effort for us to fully explore the procedures that might interplay with any uh, revision we made to the statement to make sure that uh, everything is in order and, and fully anticipated before we, we take any final step. So it, it certainly hasn't been that, uh, that we've put it on a back burner somewhere. So that should be coming forward relatively quickly. And uh, I, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, that moves us next to the President's uh, recommendations for action. We'll begin with the Treasurer's report, and I will turn to uh, Trustee uh, Dr. Drummond. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would uh, refer your attention to uh, tab six, behind tab six on 10 pages there, 31 through 41. Uh, you will find the treasurer's report, uh, many, many pages of numbers there for you to study. Uh, just to point out a couple of highlights on page 31, uh, the report states that as of April 30th, uh, all of our accounts at First National Bank have been closed and we've transferred all our accounts to our, uh, our new bank. Uh, as you study the report, uh, I would suggest to you that all the financial activities are progressing as we had planned in terms of budgets, et cetera. The auxiliary fund on pages 34 to 35, uh, the revenue to, to revenues to date are $11,793,000 plus change. That's up about, uh, oh, about $367,000 over expenses, or about 3.2%. 3, 3 that's not necessarily your report, but that's a calculation. Then on page 41, you'll see the cash balances from various funds. They show an un unencumbered balance of uh, a little over $83 million. <coughs> might suggest to you as well that uh, we discussed the college administration working with bond council and a financial advisor earlier. Uh, we're moving forward with a bank qualified $10 million revenue bond issue to advance a refund in, the, in a portion of series 2002 revenue bonds. The bonds will be sold at 10 a.m. on July 21st, and this will be presented that evening to the board for the approval for the sale. We are anticipating that this refinancing will result in a savings of about $50,000 a year uh, through fiscal year 2028, total savings of approximately $850,000. So the 
we've been watching the bond market. The timing seems to be right for us to do the refunding and refinance and save the college uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, with that being said, I can suggest that our finances are in order. They're in very good shape as you study the numbers. But we would certainly entertain some questions. Mr. Chair, sure, thank you. Uh, on the auxiliary services report on pages 34 and 35, mm -hmm. the revenue to expenditures is very positive uh, as a total. Uh, but when I look at some of the line items, and, and I, I, it would be a question, I'm assuming we have product uh, in inventory. And my question becomes um, uh, how we manage our inventory control. For example, in the dining services, we're, uh, we've, we've expended about 200000 more than we've taken in revenue, vending, um, museum stores, another one where we've got a lot more expense than revenue. So my assumption is we have product somewhere, and I would expect that that inventory control would offset that difference. You'd think that, Trustee Cook. And I think the, the, the most accurate representation of these performances will be at the end of the fiscal year when everything balances out. Yeah. I realize this is through April. And uh, so right. the um, food service in general tends to be a, a profitable venture for us. The museum store has not been as profitable, and we've had a lot of conversation over the past several months related to that, um, and also some of our projections related to um, how we deal with as, having as much product as we do in the museum store. So you're right on target with your question. Um, some, of, some of our challenges in the museum store have, have to do with some of that. But by the end of the year, you'll, where you'll see the uh, auxiliary with the food service um, to a very significant positive museum store. We're hope, keeping our fingers crossed for a break even. Th thank you. A uh, minor question. On the page 41 in our uh, <clears throat> cash, we have an account with Main Street Credit Union worth $38.16. What, what's that all about? And are we closing that out? Or I think that we got a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bob. Bob. We built in that account a number of years ago when we, uh, when we had Main Street Credit Union issue credit cards to the designated staff. And we still have a few credit cards. Okay. All right. <laughs> if we got toasters from that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Toaster. All right. Trustee Drawn. It's a recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees approve the Treasury report for the month of April 2011, subject to audit. And I would so move that. All right. We have a motion. Anyone care to a second? Second. <laughs> All right, thank you. We got a buyer. All right. Uh, any, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, Dr. Drummond, does that complete your uh, treasurer's report? That's our report for the evening. Thank you very much. All right, much. thank you. We'll now move to the uh, advisory committees uh, and monthly report to the board. Dr. Callaway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, under tab seven, you'll see. Uh, a request by the administration uh, for the board to consider our college-wide advisory councils and committees. Um, those advisory councils and committees um, were shared with you through Supplement B that was in your board packet this month. Um, these advisory councils range across the board of curriculum and other activities that we have at the college. And uh, we ask members of volunteers from the community and from the region to come in and share their expertise with us. They help us keep our curriculum fresh and other kinds of processes uh, um, on track from a business perspective. And um, as been our practice each year, we ask this board to, to consider those advisory committees and, and take action to approve those um, as they were seen in Supplement B. So it is the recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees approve advisory committees um, as contained in Supplement B in your packet. And there, in terms of these committee um, members uh, service will will run from July 1 2011 through June 30th 2012 someone care to make that motion so move all right and second second okay any discussion all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion passes and I'm sorry no Mr. just Cook. a comment I, there are 55 committees if I counted correctly and I, ju I just really want to commend everybody involved that's that's a lot of people giving input 
to the programs that take place here. Trustee Mitchelson said earlier at the podium, this college transforms lives. And uh, the, it, it just seems to me that the time that those individuals give on those 55 committees is really invaluable. And I just want to applaud everybody for managing that, whether it's uh, within a department or whether it's throughout the college. It's, to me, that's just a remarkable uh, effort to include the community. And as someone who served on uh, one of those advisory committees for a number of years before uh, joining the, the board, that is the mechanism by which the college uh, stays current and relative, uh, or, or um, uh, it, it becomes uh, relevant, uh, is the word I'm looking for, to, to the community and, and keeps its, its curriculum uh, in, with the demand for the, the businesses out there. And it plays a, uh, an extraordinarily important part in uh, keeping uh, the college on the right track. So uh, again, I commend everyone uh, that serves on those committees and the, s the amount of staff time that it takes to uh, coordinate and hold those advisory meetings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, under tab eight, you'll see my monthly report to the board with a, just a host of activities and um, recognitions that have occurred this uh, since this last report to the board. I'll just point out one or two to you. Our, uh, on the first page of my report, you'll see um, our anthropology program is just beginning to, uh, um, we'll be participating again this summer in their archaeological field school in Honduras, and we're very, very proud of them. You might remember last year they had planned to go, and then due to some of the safety issues, um, chose, we chose to encourage them to stay home, and they did. So they, uh, that uh, travel advisory has been lifted, and so that field school will, uh, will be going on again this summer, and we're very, very thankful to the work of uh, Professor McFarland, who uh, does such a great job with him in that archaeological study. Also, on the second um, page of my report, I would just point out that uh, under the first item that uh, Ron Stinson, who's a professor of music here at the college, um, is now the reigning North American cornet solo champion. He's a Ooh. music professor here, as you all know, in our, at our college. Uh, he's been involved <coughs> in helping us develop our jazz fest that we began a couple of years ago, and he's done just a great job with that and has actually performed um, at that event. And so he's, he will be the defending and reigning Cornet solo champion through the year, and he'll defend his, uh, his recognition next April um, at their competition. And then um, on page four, I would just point out to you that our own Julie Haas was awarded, uh, along with her team, a International Academy of Visual Arts Award. Um, was uh, uh, awarded, they were awarded a 2011 Communicator Award for the Changing Lives Through Learning Marketing Campaign, and the Communicator Award uh, program honors the best in advertising, corporate communications, public relations, and work in print, video, and interact interactive and audio services, and congratulations to Julie. You'll see the whole team that was involved in that, but uh, I know Julie's with us today, and congratulations to her and the team on that, and uh, with that, if the board has any questions, I'd certainly want to answer those. And if not, uh, Mr. Chairman, that would conclude my report. All right. Any questions or comments? All right. Thank you. I do not believe that we have any uh, old business to attend to uh, this evening. So we will move to uh, new business. And I'd like to, uh, to hear from Ms. Kate Allen and Mr. Steve uh, Wilkinson on a very exciting topic here. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to introduce at this time Mr. Steve Wilkinson. Steve is a former elected official from Garden City, Kansas, I learned tonight, and the current president of Menorah Medical Center. Steve's our incoming chair of the foundation, and he's also the chair of our resource development committee. So I'm pleased to turn it over to him to give a brief update on our hospitality management and culinary academy initiative. Thank you, Kate. I was remarking to Kate earlier that this brought back lots of memories from years of spending evenings around a <laughs> table like yours. I appreciate your time tonight for a very brief uh, uh, update. Um, I think it was somewhere around 18 months ago the college trustees were considering uh, an important project for the college and the expansion opportunities for the Hospitality Management and Culinary Academy um, and, and made a decision to move forward, ask uh, the foundation board uh, to consider uh, being a part of that initiative by uh, doing a capital campaign to raise approximately 30% of the cost of the, uh, 
of that project um, and uh, gave us a challenge deadline of August of 2011 to, uh, to work on that. So uh, tonight we're here to share some good news and I do want to say we appreciate the opportunity to partner with the trustees and with all of you and to be a part of uh, the growth and development of the college. We're very proud of that as well. Um, so at this time, Kate is going to hand out to you a, a list of donors to, to this capital campaign. Uh, I also want to, want to say I am the messenger here. Um, I want to take the opportunity truly to commend the work of Lindy Robinson, who uh, uh, took this initiative very personal and became the strong leader of this initiative um, and worked very closely with the, uh, uh, the, the members of the foundation board and the, and the capital campaign committee. Um, and she truly was a remarkable leader and her passion was on exhibit all the time as she was uh, making this event a or this project a reality. Uh, Ona Ashley and Felix Sturmer, Sturmer were also very much involved every step of the way and th the three of them together are a remarkable team, I'm sure not only at the culinary program but also clearly within the community and have great respect within the uh, uh, community. It's also uh, important to recognize Joe Sobchik. Dr. Sobchik was uh, very instrumental in the entire campaign as well and, and uh, as he transitions and in, transitioned into a different role, but a great deal of the success belongs to Joe as well. And also Dr. Callaway, who uh, made lots of fundraising calls, was very supportive of the initiative, very involved with us and with the, uh, with the effort, and it's really uh, um, a, uh, a great opportunity for us to to see such teamwork and to be involved together in a, in a great matter. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn it back to Kate to share more about the uh, results with you. Kate? Thank you. I know Melody will share later, I believe, um, our thanks to the Culinary um, Campaign Committee, which includes Trustee Cook and, and several other volunteers. And I have the easy job of getting to present these final numbers, but really it's the work of the great folks that were ahead of me before I even began this position to, to achieve these numbers. So we're at 3.291. And this is a totally inclusive list of all of the resources available that could be counted towards this initiative. They are listed non-alphabetically but by a dollar amount. And I'll bring your attention to the bottom key there regarding the asterisks. The first asterisk is the from the roastery, Danny O'Neill. That'll be an in-kind gift of equipment and of coffee to the program. Right below it is the Kirk Family uh, Foundation, and they're doing culinary scholarships. Moving towards the end, the equipment carryover, Ona Ashley and her team have identified more than a quarter million dollars in equipment that is still in good repair and they believe should be transferred to the new facility. So that decreases the overall expected costs and that's why that is listed there. And then finally, the maintenance and renovations contributions. That is uh, part of the Higher Education Deferred Maintenance Program offered by the state. We had several donors take advantage of that and those funds are listed and asterisked as non-construction gifts, which means they could not be used for the new facility, but they again are earmarked and could be used to retrofit the existing nine classrooms into classrooms for other programs. So again, it's a totally inclusive list, including some things like that. That's why their, their asterisks are a little bit different. But uh, the total again is, is 3.291 of all of those um, funds and gifts. And um, at this time, I just would like to thank you all again, let you know that we'll be continuing the campaign. We will be closing up some pending communication that we have with a few more viable prospects, probably run us through the fall. But at this point, this is where we stand. And I'm happy to entertain with Steve, any questions? All right, any questions or comments? Can we say yay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that would be appropriate at this time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a comment. I, I think this makes the third or fourth building now that this Board of Trustees has suggested, and I think it's a very good policy to continue. I'll be a very interested citizen watching you all here as you consider new projects, but to have a private sector equity contribution to a building. We had that with the Rainier Center and the Nerman Gallery. We had it with the Olathe Medical Center project now that they've donated the ground, and now again we have it with the culinary arts and academic initiative. I think it's just tremendous that we can see that there's a market demand for a new building and a new discipline that we're going to offer and that there's money available to build to add the public money to so we can leverage the public money and make it successful. So I hope that's a policy 
that everybody on this board continues to some, I don't know what the right percentage is, but have some percentage of private money in every one of these transactions. And I, my congratulations to Joe and Kate and Steve and every, and Dr. Calloway and everybody that worked on it. This is a tremendous success. Great job. Dr. Cook. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I too would like to thank Mr. Wilkinson, Ms. Allen, and Dr. Sopcich uh, and the entire committee. Um, they, they have really done a magnificent job. And just for the review, I think we were talking about a $10 million project, of which $3 million has been raised, and, and we committed seven. So I'm very interested in next steps. Um, I know there are additional dollars that we may receive, and Kate has discussed that that's kind of open. But um, um, I still believe we're in a period of um, positive construction with good bids from contractors, and so I'm very curious about what our next steps would be on this project. Mr. Chairman, if I might, yes. to Dr. Cook's uh, question. Um, as you know, as we were getting closer to the target, we decided to, and this board approved the uh, um, contracting with uh, through the RFP process with the architect, and so DLR group has been working diligently over the last couple of months to get started um, in putting together the the, uh, the next stage, first first cuts of, of drawings and some projections on actual and real costs and so we're actually we've continued on in fact we anticipating moving forward knew that uh, and you might remember some of our conversations of what if the, the money looks different and so uh, we're going to continue on with that uh, we expect that um, somewhere probably in the mid to late part of the fall we'll we'll have some final drawings and be prepared to start to look at uh, general contractor kinds of um, work but I think you're absolutely right the timing is still good to, uh, for major projects like this uh, to work with general contractors and get good prices. So the, uh, we expect good, good rates and good prices as we move forward. And I would guess sometime in the fall we'll be moving, you know, once we have the drawings through DLR, we'll start to move forward with, with uh, RFPs related to general contractors. We are also in the, in the site selection process. I know Dr. Grove and I had some conversations today and uh, we'll start to pull that material together and probably next month have some, probably through management committee, some discussion related to um, potential sites on, on campus where, where this uh, facility fits the best for all of the various variables. So, uh, I think you'd you know, probably ballpark right now, expect mid-fall, mid probably the next, the next phase would be the general contract. I, I would like to consider, I think, um, some kind of communication back to the donors uh, with a timeline because they've, they've made some serious commitments and they say, well, when is this project going to be? And even if we had some kind of a public relations letter that describes what you just described, I realize we can't be definite about certain dates, right. but some assurance that this project is well underway and will actually take place. Okay. Great and idea. We'll, we'll make sure we do that. And perhaps uh, Trustee Cook, as they, uh, as we determine the naming opportunities, once the design comes into play, that'd be another opportunity to communicate with the donors along those lines. If I can add just Please. one thing, uh, I'd like to thank Trustee Cook for his involvement on that committee. Uh, there were a lot of early morning meetings which he attended, and also I'd like to acknowledge Trustee Stewart's contribution, which is also listed on here. Uh, but equally so, it's important to note that whenever this happens, um, Myself, Kate, Steve, we're always kind of in the spotlight because that's what we do. But there are a lot of other people that are a big part of this. And uh, for example, um, we benefited from fantastic publications um, for this campaign. We had some wonderful technical support to make PowerPoints and to produce things along the line. When we'd have meals in the morning, catering came through and everything always looked really good. So the successful fundraising campaign really is reflective of an entire campus and everyone who works on the campus, they're all a part of that. So I just want to make sure that everybody gets the credit uh, for this successful effort. If I might, just to add to Joe's comments, Mr. Chairman, um, we also engaged the students in this um, activity. And I think one of the really um, bright moments of, of the camp campaign process was um, in a couple of places, Kate had um, students walk in the door, and Lindy, with Lindy's uh, support certainly and, and leadership, uh, students walk in the door with um, treats for those who we were asking uh, hmm. money. And so you know, we left students um, work with them. So they got to see the fruits of the labor of the students who were doing some of the things in our pastry program and other things. So if anyone's hungry, they let us know and we'll um, have the students bring some 
pastries and other things with them, but we'll probably ask for money too. But the students were <laughs> deeply engaged in this one. I think it, it was a really great strategy and a part of the team and worked very well. So are you suggesting that as a new protocol for board meetings? <laughs> I'm I second that. <laughs> Bring your checkbooks and we'll look. <laughs> All right, and, and thank you. And, and I also want to uh, make sure that we acknowledge uh, the very generous gift of the Weissong family that, that kicked this, this whole project off and without which probably none of this uh, would happen or would not certainly be happening uh, in, in this time frame. So uh, uh, we very much appreciate their, their, their very generous gift. Thank you to Steve and Kate and the whole team. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Steve, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that concludes our, our new business. And to provide some uh, continuity uh, with the, uh, the Culinary Center, I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Rail uh, to provide her foundation report first. And then we'll go back to the normal uh, listings here on, on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, you know, certainly this is an exciting um, report for us to receive. You know, we... Uh, we challenged the foundation as a board to to raise enough money to make this project a reality and and uh, while we were confident uh, it certainly is nice to uh, to reach the goal and realize that we're there and and uh, kudos to Kate and Steve and Joe and the folks who who kind of spearheaded um, what was going on and I I want to make sure that you know we've we've added a lot of thanks here and everybody uh, had an opportunity to chime in but I just want to make sure that everyone gets thanked and so I I have kind of an organized list here I think first it's important for us to thank each and every individual and organization on this list uh, because clearly without uh, their contributions we wouldn't be celebrating any of this and and um, you know as as chair Weiss mentioned starting with David Weissong and his most generous gif gift that got this all off uh, at the beginning. But um, I want to make sure that we recognize everyone who served on the committee. And so I, I don't typically list uh, people, but I think it's important in this case that we do that. And so the folks who uh, worked on that committee were Trustee Cook, Ed Holland, Kevin Pistoli, Bob Rainier, Stu Stein. Uh, Steve, of course, and David Weissong, and, and certainly each and every one of them uh, put forth tremendous effort um, to, to see this project to its completion, or, or at least where we are now. Uh, Lindy Robinson, as was mentioned, did a fantastic job uh, at keeping things going. Uh, Ona Ashley, also the Director of Hospitality Management, played a pivotal role. And then, of course, there's the, uh, the wonderful presence of our hospitality management program itself and uh, executive chef and coach of the culinary team, uh, Felix Sturmer, and all of the folks who are a part of that program who make it look so good and uh, who make it easy for folks to get their heads wrapped around the idea of, of a culinary center and, and the fruits that it can produce. So thanks to everyone who, who played a part in that. And, uh, and Kate, well done. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, uh, Trustee Rail. Uh, if I might, Mr. Chairman. Please do. There's one person that we've missed. Um, and um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention him, and that's Dick Bond. Um, mm -hmm. Dick, Dick Bond joined us at several of the meetings, um, and most particularly the ones where we were doing major asks, and uh, in many ways was very influential. And, and he had a chance to say a couple of things that sometimes we wouldn't be able to say. So uh, he was very diligent in helping us with this as well. And, and um, well, I know he wasn't on the committee. He kind of was an ex officio member and did um, join, I know, several of us in um, several meetings and, and uh, just was a good partner in this one. So I just want to publicly recognize uh, Senator Bond as well and, and thank him for his, his service. All right, thank you. All right, uh, we're, we're going to turn now to uh, Trustee Mitchelson for his very last uh, uh, Kansas Association of Community College Trustee uh, uh, report and the Johns County Research Triangle report. So, <clears throat> Trustee Mitchelson. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees met last weekend in Kansas City, Kansas on the uh, 10th and 11th of June, and we were lucky to have. Uh, great representation of Johnson County Community College. Several trustees were there, 
Dr. Joe Soptic represented the administration, and I think it uh, really paid off. You could tell from the other trustees that come from around the, uh, around the state that they appreciate that Johnson County uh, had great attendance there. The, uh, the next KACCT meeting will be in September, and by that time you will have selected a, a new representative to attend. It has been an honor for me to be part of KACCT. I've been serving as treasurer, and they elected a new treasurer effective with the academic year July 1. Uh, a lot of good things have gone on in that association. The, the treasurer's report was one of ample funds, so assessments will not be increased among the participating 19 colleges. There's a marketing program that we did not have at one time. And uh, there, there is general agreement on the tiered funding for technical education if the state should ever have ample resources so that they could fund that. So there's a lot of good things that have happened in KACCT, and I give a lot of the credit to Dr. Calloway and his participation in that and giving uh, intentional uh, interest uh, all the way through the last few years to get, get uh, to show that Johnson County Community College could uh, balance its uh, perhaps more affluent financial situation with that of some of the other community colleges that are struggling to, with lower assess valuations and, uh, and smaller budgets. So I think we're more readily accepted in that organization than we used to be, and I urge this board to always have someone who's really active and participating in it, hopefully plays a role as an officer going forward, and someone who will go to the, the September meetings. Uh, was a really good opportunity for me, and uh, I'm really going to miss the chance to be with everybody. And uh, I want to particularly thank you for, for the many, many what probably seemed like fruitless hours that you spent on uh, working with the other colleges uh, in KACCT, particularly related to uh, the distribution uh, formulas. I know that was very frustrating uh, time for you to uh, to work with that when there didn't seem to be much progress being made, but uh, it's certainly something that's been much appreciated by this college, so I want to thank you for your efforts in that. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes two trustees to uh, re replace you as a liaison uh, to KACCT. Okay, moving ahead with uh, JCERT. Uh, we had a meeting this Monday at uh, 8 a.m., and uh, this was the first meeting we've held at the K-State Innovation Campus, uh, roughly... Uh, Highway K-7 and <clears throat> College Boulevard. It's a beautiful new building and uh, it gave us a chance to see what the resources are that K-State will be bringing to our community. Uh, the uh, JCERT board is moving along. Uh, the receipts are slightly below what were, was projected when the enabling legislation was passed in November of 2008. We originally thought there was going to be sales tax revenue from the one eight cent sales tax that was passed in November of 2008 of about 15 million a year with five million to each college and there's more like about uh, 13 and a half million right now with the the effects of the recession and the financial crisis of 2008. So it's not quite as much money as each institution had expected, but it's enough to fund each institution's construction project. If you've been down Quivira, you've seen the best building emerging on the Edwards campus. The structural steel's up there. They've started construction up in Fairway in the office building that the Hall family's given to the Med Center where clinical trials will hopefully be uh, done before long and we'll get some National Cancer Institute recognition there. And uh, of course the K-State building is already finished and is occupied and is a very attractive addition to Johnson County. So. JCERT is off and running, and I, I look forward to learning who's going to serve, represent this board going forward. It's been an honor for me to be part of it since uh, for the past two and a half years. It really is a miracle that it passed, I believe, in November of 2008, and it's a tremendous benefit. The, the dividends really haven't even started to, to unfold for Johnson County and this community, but we're right in the middle of the triangle, and I think we might be the biggest beneficiary of any, even though none of the money flows directly to Johnson County Community College. So thank you all for giving me the opportunity to serve on JSERT. It's been a great opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Collegial Steering Committee, uh, Trustee Rail. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. The Collegial Steering Committee met um, this afternoon just prior to this meeting, and it was a relatively short meeting. We had a single item on the agenda, and that was the continued discussion of the designation of a Master of Fine Arts degree as a specialist degree for compensation purposes. Uh, it's a topic that's been discussed over the past several months uh, in keeping with the rigorous curriculum that is required to attain a Master of Fine Arts and, and the um, academic standard, if you will, around the country. Uh, that's something that uh, the faculty's been trying to get done. And, and I believe we're, we're there I, as of uh, the academic year 2011-2012. Uh, the Master of Fine Arts will be considered a specialist degree for purposes of compensation and that's uh, that was the only item on our agenda today. So that concludes my report and I see Jeff uh, making his way to the podium for faculty association. All right, thank you and uh, we always look forward to uh, Mr. Anderson to your report. So faculty association. Good evening. Very happy to uh, be able to tie that issue up tonight, uh, collegial steering regarding the MFA uh, degree. It's been out there as an, on, as an ongoing issue for probably over a decade, I'm sure. And um, it, it was really a, I think, a good example of how a collegial steering process can work because everyone participated in this process. Uh, people on both sides of the table did research. Uh, they, they were involved in discussions, and I think we came to a good decision uh, that that's going to um, benefit uh, folks that that have long been waiting for this benefit to come their way so i'm very happy about that and i um, very glad that we were able to sign ink to the paper tonight even though i signed in the wrong place but we got that fixed and <laughs> we were able to get through that little gaff there so tonight i just want to take a few uh, moments to uh to thank uh, lynn mitchelson and i want to thank you for your commitment to the college you know you've been here for 15 years and i'm sure it's been a big part of your life during those 15 years and you know the thing I've always liked about your your uh, commitment to the college is that uh, you were here for a, uh, a a service type type commitment. It wasn't a, an idea that you wanted to be here to launch your career in another direction or, or aspire to a higher office. You were here because you wanted to serve the college. You were you had a uh, interest in this place and an interest in people who worked here. And I'll always be grateful for that. And so, thank you. I think it speaks a lot of your personal character and your and your integrity. Um, you didn't come from a higher education background, but you became a student of the enterprise of higher education. Uh, you've asked a lot of questions along the way. You, um, I, I'm, I've been in a lot of meetings over, over the years uh, with you, and you're always coming there and you're always taking notes and always asking questions. I've always been impressed by that. Uh, you're really into the discussion and, and, and you get very involved in that process, so I've always, I've always liked that. You've been a great mentor to, uh, to uh, the board members here today and, and uh, many board members in the past, and uh, that, that's been a major influencing factor in terms of where we stand today, too, I think. so. You've led us through uh, some good times, some embarrassing times, and some difficult times, uh, but through that process, you've been a voice of reason and, and, and a steady influence uh, in, in terms of your leadership uh, with, with the board here, too. I've always sensed that your heart's been in the right place, no matter what we do and no matter where we go. The only regret I have is that, uh, due to the nature of our respective positions, we found ourselves at times at opposite ends of the table, um, at times, um, but after tonight, that's no longer the case, and so I'm happy to say that. Our loss at the college will certainly be the uh, Baxter Springs Bank's gain. I can't imagine them getting a better person to step in and lead and, and to, uh, guide them to a better place. And tonight we're here in the, the uh, Hugh Spear boardroom. And uh, Dr. Spear was uh, here many years ago and probably at a time before most of you guys were even here. Um, he was a, a pretty colorful character and maybe a, a little eccentric, but uh, that was good, I thought. And uh, he wound up having a, a, a room named after his, after his service here. And so I'm hoping in your case, Lynn, you've been here for 15 years that you'll wind up maybe with a building with your name on it someday. So <laughs> um, again, I want to thank you and good luck in your future here. Thank you very much, Jeff. That's it. All right, I, I think uh, uh, Trustee Mitchelson deserves another very warm round of applause at this point. So.
perhaps you could get him to come down to Baxter Springs and say all those nice things. <laughs> I'll let you there, too. Get all the cheers I can get. Right. All right, we come to the uh, second petitions and communications section of our agenda. And again, the petitions and communications section uh, is a time for members of the community to provide comments to the board. Comments are limited to five minutes unless a significant number of people plan to speak, in which case the chair may limit a person's uh, comments to less than five minutes. Uh, presenters may choose to speak either at the first or second petitions and communication sections, but not both. And prior to beginning the comments, we ask that you state your name, your address, uh, city, and state. And do we have anyone that would like to address the board at this time that has, has not previously addressed the board this evening? Yes. <clears throat> James Freed. 11600 West 127th Terrace, Overland Park, Kansas. I'd like to preface this, my apologies to Dr. Calloway and Dr. Grove that I didn't give you any advance warning because I wasn't planning to be up here tonight until Trustee Rail inspired me to bring forward some information. Uh, prior to the 15 years, I've had the pleasure of working for JCCC. I worked for eight years for the Blue Valley School District. <clears throat> Many of the administrators are not there that were there at the time, but at that time they went through a similar process as the college with an RFP and considering outsourcing, which they did do. Um, and I'm not going to mention the company's name, but um, that situation uh, during the course of the year plus that they worked with them, uh, there was some criminal activities that occurred, uh, allegations, and I believe there was some prosecution that may have occurred after that where some of the management that the outsourcing company put into place that ran buildings and grounds uh, and housekeeping uh, were actually conducting business activities using school district equipment at, at, after hours. Now that was probably perceived to be a very extraordinary circumstance. But um, in that particular instance, uh, like the colleges talked about, those companies offered the opportunity for college employees to go to work with them uh, typically, the uh, school district employees took a salary cut, and typically those companies offered no benefits to those employees. And so many of those employees had families, livelihoods. They couldn't take a 20-plus percent cut and benefits. I mean, if any of us think about whatever our income level is to take that kind of cut and to lose benefits, many of those housekeeping, housekeepers, custodians left to seek other employment. Of course, this is a very difficult time to do that with the economy. But when the school district went through that situation, I believe that it was, it was about the time I came here, but I believe they ultimately terminated that, con that contract and went back to uh, in-house uh, housekeeping. Um, I can only tell you because I, as an architect, and I develop and, and build the buildings, I take a certain pride in the buildings, and I can only speak for myself personally. But I can tell you that I saw a significant de decline in the quality of the services uh, during that time and the upkeep of the buildings. That's just me personally. But um, I, I would definitely encourage some conversation with Blue Valley schools and especially perhaps trying to get a hold of some of the administration. I believe there was a lot of this in the newspaper, so uh, it might be of some value as, this, as the uh, college moves forward. I can only tell you again from a personal standpoint that you know, if we're considering something that with our employees that includes benefits and we're comparing them to uh, proposals that may maybe don't include the same level of benefits, it seems like it's apples to oranges and I would hope there's some process given the college is committed to these people, their families and the livelihood for 45 years that there's an equalization factor in considering that. And I know this board has that in their heart. So thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have anyone else that would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close the uh, second uh, communications and petition section and move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda uh, is a part of, of the agenda where the board considers in one motion uh, a number of uh, items that are considered to be routine. And uh, uh, unless anyone uh, would, would care to uh, pull any of those particular items, we will consider them all in one motion. And I will uh, turn to Dr. Calloway. Uh, for comments uh, regarding the items in today's consent agenda. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just um, point you to tabs 9 through 15 in, in your packet this evening, which includes curriculum, regular monthly reports, including the minutes of your previous meetings, cast disbursements, bids, gifts and grants, and then our human resources report and addendum. 
and it will be the recommendation of the administration that the board consider the consent agenda this evening. I'd so move the approval of the consent agenda. Second. second. All right, we have both a motion and a second. Uh, any, any comments or discussion? All right, seeing none, we will consider all the items. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions pass. All right, that concludes the, uh, uh, the public portion of our meeting tonight. We will have an executive uh, session this evening, so I'd like to entertain a motion to go in an executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interest of the individuals to be discussed and consultation with an attorney, which will be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the privilege and the board's communications with attorney uh, on legal matters. Uh, I anticipate that this session will last about 60 minutes. Uh, we may be good done earlier, but uh, they tend to run long. So we'll say 60 minutes, and no action will be taken during this session. And at this time, I would like to in in invite uh, Mark Ferguson, uh, Terry Calloway, and Terry Schlicht uh, to participate in that. And uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. I have a motion uh, made by uh, Trustee Rail and a second by uh, Trustee Mitchelson. And all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we will take a five minute break and uh, reconvene for our executive session at 7 o'clock. <laughs> we are back from uh, a 60 minute executive uh, session. No a uh, action was taken. Uh, we will be extending that executive session for another 30 minutes. And uh, so at this time, uh, we are adjourned again from the public session and we'll return in 30 minutes. Need a oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we need a motion uh, to that effect. I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interest of individuals to be discussed. Consultation with an attorney would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the privilege uh, and the board's communications with its attorney on legal matters. Uh, this uh, second executive session will last for 30 minutes and no action will be taken during this session. We'd like to in invite Mark Ferguson, uh, Dr. Telly, uh, Terry Calloway, and uh, Terry Schlicht to join the executive session and I'll entertain a motion at this so time. So uh, it's moved by uh, Trustee Mitchelson and seconded by Second. by Trustee Rail. Uh, and we will start at uh, 8.03 and continue for 30 minutes. And did we vote on this or? Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor, motion passes. We'll go into executive session.